Hey guys, welcome back to PHT TV and welcome back to another What's in the Box. If you're unfamiliar with the concept of What's in the Box, what we've been doing over the last couple of weeks is we have been disassembling the Heritage series, starting with the Heresy 4 and the Forte 4. If you haven't seen those videos, make sure you go and check them out. And this week we're going to move on to the Cornwall 4 to remove all the drive components, the low frequency, the high frequency, and the mid-range driver and horns, and take a peek inside the box to show you the crossover network, the inside of the input cup, and then kind of show you how everything connects. So without any more delay, let's go ahead and get started. Let's see what's in the box on the Cornwall 4s. And as per usual, I have my trusty T25 Torx bit screwdriver. We're gonna start with the high frequency driver here and then we'll move on to the mid range and then down to the low frequency driver. All right, now as mentioned in the Forte video, there is likely to be some stickage from where the paint goes. Stickage is a technical term, by the way. There is likely to be kind of a seal that's formed around the edges where the paint has dried and sealed it to the cabinet. So you may need to pry a little bit to get it out. Also, as mentioned, if you do end up needing to pry, if that seal is too much for say your fingertips or your fingernails, you'll wanna pry between the mid-range horn and the high frequency horn so that you're not damaging the wood when trying to pry from the side there. Pry from the bottom here. And as per usual, you can't just pull straight out. You'll want to drop down, tilt, and then come back out here. Plenty of room for maneuverability here. Right, pinch and pull. Pinch and pull. And here we have our K107TI with horn. 100694. That is the same part number that you'll use, the same driver and horn combination that you'll use for the Heresies and the Fortes as well. So this is definitely something we've already seen in the past. Now let's move on to our mid-range driver here. For those that have not seen any of our videos yet, I always recommend using a screwdriver as opposed to a drill. And the reason being is with the drill, you stand the risk of potentially harming the speakers. You run the risk of stripping out the screw holes. But I will say again, with the Heritage Series, this isn't as big of a deal because you are using nuts and bolts as opposed to wood screws. And another thing that I always mention on these drive components, you're gonna to wanna to save a bottom screw for last, especially if they've been removed before and don't have that paint seal like we just been working with, the weight of the driver will tend to make the unit tilt back this way. And then once I get to this one, I'm just going to keep my hand on the horn as I unscrew, because as you can see, it is already shifting and wanting to pull out. So now that I have the screw out a little bit, I'll be able to just let it drop just a bit, enough for me to get a grasp on the bottom side here, and then pull straight forward. Here we have the K702 mid-range driver. Here's our driver and horn combination for the Cornwall 4. All right, and let's also unscrew it and show you that we do have our K702 mid-range driver. And here is the mid-range horn assembly with the mumps technology. It's got a deeper throat, does mount differently on the horn as well. I'm gonna set this off to the side as well. All right, and finally, let's move on to the Cornwall 4. 
low frequency driver. And let's go ahead and put this in fast forward so you guys don't have to watch this whole section. I'm gonna speed this up by like a thousand percent. So I can be done just like that. And as always, I have saved one bottom screw for last so that as we remove, we can keep a thumb on here. So it does not just want to fall out of the cabinet. As you can see, we are already shifting. If I were to let go right now, this thing would likely start to fall out of the cabinet. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up from the bottom and tilt towards us so we can get our hands on the magnet. All right, and here we have our K33E, which is our 15 inch low frequency driver of the Cornwall 4. All right, I'm gonna set this off to the side as well. Now one thing that we've had some requests for since we did the Heresy video is to actually pull out a port and show you what those ports are looking like. Ports use a T20 as opposed to the T25. And I'm only gonna pull out one because these are all gonna be identical. Ports actually use wood screws. So in the unlikely scenario that you ever need to or want to pull out a port, definitely use a screwdriver on this component as opposed to a drill. And here is your Cornwall 4 Tractrix port. Since we missed this before and we had some requests, I did want to pull out the Heresy 4 Tractrix port and show it to you guys. So this is a port from the Heresy 4. Now I'm going to set it down and show you right next to the Cornwall 4. Check that out, it does use the exact same port, it appears, as the Heresy 4. So the Heresy 4 and Cornwall 4 use the same use the same port, but the Cornwall 4 does use three of them. The Heresy uses one. It's really interesting to me to see what components carry over from device to device, and I hope it's interesting to you guys as well. Put that off to the side here, and let's take a look inside the cabinet. As you can see, we do have one solid cabinet going all the way up to the top here. Here are our other two ports. See that we do have port number one, port number two, which we took out would be here, and then port number three. We have our crossover network on the side there, and that is the inside of our input cup there. Here's the inside of our input cup. So coming from our input cup, we do have our high frequency that follows around here. And here is our high frequency input here. Then from there, we have our high frequency and our mid frequency that split out and go to the drivers. On the other side, we have our low frequency that comes from the input cup and travels around and goes here. Then here's our low frequency out from the crossover network that goes into our driver through this cable here. We do have our cabinet bracing here on the side here, which we haven't seen in these cabinets just yet because now we're getting into some heavier drivers. All right, so here we have a comparison shot of all three of our speakers. We have seen what's in the box for so far. In the middle, we have our current, which is the Cornwall 4. On the bottom, we have our Heresy 4, and on the top, we have our Forte 4. So this kind of gives you a comparison to both speakers next to the Cornwall 4 here. To start, we have our three K107 Ti's. So the Cornwall 4, the Heresy 4, and the Forte 4, all three use the K107 Ti. Moving down to our mid-range, you'll see that we all use our K702 mid-range driver. You can see that the Heresy and the Cornwall both use this red rubber gasket, whereas the Forte does not. 
but they are both they are all three the K702 mid-range drivers. Where they differ is going to be in the horn. So here is our massive Cornwall 4 horn right in the middle here, next to our Heresy horn on the left and our Forte horn on the right. So there's our three horn assemblies that all attach to the same K702 driver. Here we have our low frequencies. On the left, we have our K28E Heresy driver. On the right, we have our K281 Forte driver, which are both 12 inch drivers. And in the middle, we have our Cornwall K33E 15 inch driver. Now moving down to the last component we removed. On the left, we have our Heresy port. And in the middle, we have one of three of the Cornwall 4 ports. We do have the KD15 15 inch passive radiator going in the Forte. And that is our drive components of the Cornwall 4 next to the Forte 4 and Heresy 4 system. All right, guys, I think that's going to be about it for today. This was our Cornwall 4 What's in the Box. If you haven't already, you may want to check out our last week's Forte What's in the Box and the week before that's Heresy What's in the Box. Next week, we're going to take the La Scala out and see what's inside there and show you the insides of that as well. Please like and subscribe below, and we'll see you again next week for another What's in the Box, another episode of PHTTV. Hey guys, welcome back to PHTTV. Got an echo. We got an echo. Let's fix this blanket so we don't have an echo. There is our, oops.